Hey everyone, welcome to UB Chef and my weekly videos showing you how to uh, cook and plate up the dishes that we've done this week. Uh, so we've got nine dishes coming up as well as the bread, uh, which this week is actually a brioche, baked pumpkin brioche uh, with a lovely parmesan butter. So I'm going to take you through those in a second. Uh, thanks so much for ordering uh, this week. Uh, it's a huge week, really, really big. Um, we're about to start packing our second uh, deliveries for, for tomorrow uh, shortly. Um, massive thanks to the team as well. Uh, it's been some really, really long shifts this week and they've done absolutely fantastic. So big shout out to them. Um, so we'll start working through these now. Remember you get this lovely little recipe book and you get this video of course, uh, but it's designed for you to really kind of have fun with it and don't necessarily plate it how I plated it, really have fun. That's, that's the whole idea of UB Chef, um, bringing the restaurant to your home. Um, so let's get cooking. So we're going to start off with our weekly bake, uh, which this week is a pumpkin and thyme brioche uh, with this lovely parmesan butter. So as per the instructions in here, I've taken my brioche in the foil that it comes in, put it in the oven, it's going to be in there about eight minutes. Um, if your oven's not a fan, a little bit longer, but you just want to be have that nice pot in the middle. So parmesan butter, this is just lovely local butter, which has been whipped up with um, some uh, parmesan. Uh, then seasoned as well. Um, so let it come up to room temperature. Then you can either serve it like that, just to go, or just it's really spreadable where it's been whipped. And if, especially if you, you let it warm up, just take that out. And you could quenell it, or you could just uh, like spread it straight on. But I like to just do a nice little pot like that. Flatten it down. There we go. And then let's get a little bit of extra molten salt to serve with. So just take a little cloth, wipe that around the edge, like so, and then a little bit of molten salt. I just love that when you just spread it with a knife, you get little hints of salt, just with that bread lovely as you go. So, butter all ready to go. Let's get our brioche out. Here it comes. And then Carefully undo that foil. Look at that. Lovely. So, lovely glaze on the top of there with thyme. And we've had the pumpkin and we've caramelised that down and then put that through the dough so you can you can just see there the lovely layers all going through it. Beautiful. So, I'm just going to take a little bit of rapeseed on the top to give that even more of a shine. Again, a tiny bit of rapeseed. And then you can serve it however you like, really. But you can see it's divided into nice four pieces, so I'm just gonna cut it straight through them. It smells awesome, absolutely lovely. Bang on seasonal, and then let's just arrange those up on there. And there we go, all ready. So at the table before we get cooking with your starters. So first start to few is this fritter misto of red mullet and a mouthy lemon. So it's just in a light batter. Um, this is gonna go in the oven for about eight minutes just to crispen it back up again. And then we've got little baby artichokes to go with. They're gonna go in the oven just to warm up. And then I've got a gremolata butter, which in here we've got, uh, again, a mouthy lemon. We've got the zest and juice, uh, as well as lots of garlic and parsley. So that's gonna get heated up. If you want, you can add a touch of water to the pan as well, just to bubble it up and get a nice sauce out of that. Um, and so eight minutes in the oven and we'll be back to plate up. So here comes my red mullet out of the oven and my artichokes already and then my butter just all heated up there. And then you can have a little bit of seasoning if you like just to the just to the mullet and the lemon. There we go. And then all you need to do is just build it up nicely. So we'll go with some mullet artichoke and lemon, and then just alternate it round. Like so. And that butter's nice and zesty here, and that's obviously designed to cut through because you've got sort of a, a fatty sort of uh, flavor of the, of the mullet here. So, nice little balance all arranged. And then what we do then, take our nice little gremolata butter, and you can sauce it around, but I like to put it actually over because then it's like when you get gremolata prawns or something like that, the butters are actually all over the ingredients and then it flavours it all up beautifully. So, simple as that. Lovely Moorish starter. 
Pretty Misto Mullet and a Malfi Lemon. Next up for you is this uh, local pheasant, uh, which we've done as a pastrami. Uh, so again, we've brined it for three days, uh, smoked it over hickory chips, um, and then we've done a little coating on there, so you've got some juniper, uh, coriander, um, and then all you need to do is basically just cut your uh, pastrami out of its packet, like so. There we go. And then, Get your remoulade, so Sarah at remoulade, this is just bound with a lovely little mayonnaise with some gherkins, capers, fresh parsley going through there. Give that a little stir and then let's get that into the centre of our plate. And just create like a little sort of rectangle, the same as what your pastrami is as well, just so that it can all sit nicely on, on the top. So I'll just arrange that. So, a tiny bit more on there. This has got a lovely crunch. Uh, we, we salt the snare out briefly before, just to get some of the water out and wilt it down. But it's raw, so it's just got a beautiful crunch to it. Great flavour. So, that's our snare out done. And then what we'll do, I'm just gonna take a little spatula, cut knife, and then I'm just gonna carefully get my pastrami. You can turn it out onto it if you prefer, and then arrange that on the top, like so. Obviously we've done our best to take any shot out of these pheasant. Sometimes you might get a little wine in there, but we've done our best of course to take it out. So that's our pheasant all arranged nicely on the top. Um, and then you've got this lovely russet apple dressing. So this is made of a russet apple vinegar, rapeseed oil uh, from the Isle of Wight. And then we've got a dice of fresh russet apple in there as well. And what I'm gonna do is just spoon some of that around this has got a really nice zing to it again which is gonna really go fantastic you have that mayonnaise from the remoulade a little bit of the actual dressing just over the top as well and then just to finish off a little bit of extra texture some toasted hazelnuts i'm just gonna add those around and there you've got lovely pastrami local pheasant Bang on season, russet apple, and Sarah Remoulade. Enjoy. Little vegetarian starter here for you now on the menu, and actually this is my favourite dish on the menu this week. Um, just we tasted it yesterday, uh, all, all plated up, um, and yeah, just just loving this one. So uh, gnocchi wild mushrooms um, with aged parmesan. That's going to go in the oven uh, for about twelve minutes. Um, and then six minutes later, we're going to add our little cheese toasty. So this has got some lovely sourdough bread uh, with a watercress and parmesan bechamel going through the centre. So it's got a great charred flavour and the water, watercress being lovely and peppery in the centre. That's going to take six minutes to heat up. And then we've got some wild mushrooms, a little selection of sauté with some sherry vinegar. They're going to go in the oven at the same time as the toasty. And then even more, a little wild mushroom and Madeira sauce. Uh, which is gonna, so you've almost got like garlic mushrooms uh, with that creamy sauce, uh, that's gonna just dress over the top of it. So we'll be back in a second, um, once we've got our, that's been in for 12, this is going in for six, and then we'll be back ready to plate up. So Noki's been in 12 minutes now, so we're just gonna grab that out. Careful, really, the tray's really, really hot. And also, there's our toasty. There's our mushrooms. And there's our mushroom and Madeira sauce. So let's get this plated up. Now what I want to do first is take a few gnocchi. We'll just drain them off a little bit as well from the, from the cooking liquor that they're in. We'll just place those really, really careful then because they're nice and delicate now they've heated up. And then we'll take a few mushrooms. Don't place it too much, it wants to be nice and organic here in the plate. Then let's get the final knocky in there, lovely. We'll put a little bit of sauce. So keep that nice and central. There we go. And then let's finish off a few more mushrooms on there. 
left on the top. Like so. And then our toasty, which we just lift that out. I like to add a little bit of uh, molding, a little bit of salt just on the top of that one. And again, nice and careful with this where it's sort of oozing out that little uh, bechamel. So we're just going to place that just at the back. And then now, a tiny bit more sauce. There we go. So, lovely wild mushroom gnocchi. Um, a little bit of sherry vinegar in those mushrooms. Cheese toasty, and uh, maybe with watercress bechamel and some lovely sourdough bread. So our first main course this week, uh, we've got a seafood ravioli. So just in here, uh, you've got a lovely saffron pasta, Kashmiri saffron, um, and then inside we've got some like a salmon mousse, and um, that's bound um, binding a some lobster. Uh, braised octopus in there as well, tiger prawns, so there's plenty of shellfish and fish in there. We've got some monkfish um, and then parsley, um, and yeah, lovely tasty ravioli. So that's going to go in the water um, for about nine minutes. Okay, so lower it in carefully and you want the water just simmering, not boiling away, otherwise the pasta will damage. So get your timer on, then nine minutes in there, and you'll see what I've got ready. I've got a little pan, just with some butter and a touch of oil, touch of water. Um, you can put some seasoning in there as well. Nutmeg is lovely if you have it, but don't worry if not. But make sure you've got a little liquor, just ready for the ravioli to go out in, into a warm pan. So that's going to just simmer away there. Just control that heat nicely. Nine minutes. And then what we've got here, we've got our buttered spinach. We've got gratin of clams. Uh, so in here we've done a lovely little mix of clams, breadcrumbs, parsley again, and salsify. They're all going to go in the oven. Now for about eight minutes, you can just put them straight in their foil containers. Um, and then lastly, we've got shellfish bisque. Uh, so this has been made from the, the uh, shells of all the roasted lobster. Um, it's got some lovely, little bit of tomato in there, a little bit of brandy as well, white wine. That's just going to go on the heat. I'm just going to start warming that up gently. Um, so keep an eye on your ravioli. Make sure you've got a little slotted spoon ready to get it out of the water. Be careful when you do, because it's obviously going to be quite hot. Uh, and then we'll be back ready to plate that up shortly. Okay, so I'm just going to grab out my garnish now. So the sausage already. Gratin of clams. And of course our spinach. So they're all ready to go. And then let's bring our pan over to the ravioli. And then of course our shellfish bisque. So what we want to do Take a little slotted spoon or a little, little spatula and lift that ravioli out carefully. Let it drain off a little bit and then into your pan. And then a tiny bit of molten salt just on the top. Keep it moving just so it doesn't stick to the bottom of that pan if it's heated up. And then what we'll do first, take your spinach. This is all seasoned up, of course, ready to go. We're going to put a nice pile of spinach in the centre. Then we're going to take some of our salsify. Get it all seasoned. Nice salsify around. Then next we'll take our clams. And these have got lovely uh, like garlic, parsley, white wine going through them. There we go, all around. And then next, get a little spatula again. And just give it a little drain on the top like so. And then we'll finish with our bisque. I'm going to put a little bit over the top of the ravioli just to dress it. And then just to touch around. There we go. Little shellfish uh, seafood ravioli, saffron pasta, gratinated clams around the outside, and some nice chaga of salsify and shellfish bisque. So next up, next main course, we've got a herb crusted venison. Um, so here we've got the saddle of venison. 
Um, lovely little herb crust on the top. Uh, serving that with a venison donut. So we've got a braised um, shoulder just in there. Uh, right in the centre and then a, just a simple donut dough around the outside. Um, then we've got radicchio, sautéed with a touch of sherry vinegar, venison sauce which is finished with lots of things, red currant jelly, green peppercorn, touch of chocolate in there. And then we've got a lovely smooth uh, butternut squash puree on there as well. So what you're going to start off with is venison and a donut going to go, go in the oven. Um, donut's going to take about 12 minutes and then we'll put the venison in just shortly after. Depends how you like your venison, it's cooked at the moment, medium rare. Uh, so if you like it more well done, it's going to take about 20 minutes in the oven. Um, if you like it a little bit less, nice and pink, only going to take about 8-10 minutes. Um, Radicchio going at the same time as that and then we'll get our sauce and our puree onto heat. We'll be back shortly to plate up. So that's my uh, squash puree venison sauce all heated up there. And let's grab out, firstly our radicchio venison. And our little comfy venison donut as well. Okay, so to plate up on here, first of all take some of your squash puree, Let's give it a nice stir, and then a little bit on one side of the plate like so. And if you want to be chefy, take a little palette knife or a little scraper and just drag a little bit of that over to one side. And then we'll take some of our radicchio. Radicchio of course has that bitter taste. We've got some sugar in there and a touch of sherry vinegar. It just goes lovely against the sweet uh, butternut squash puree. So, touch of radicchio, a little bit to sit our venison on. There we go. And then we'll put our donut down. And of course our fillet of venison, just with that beautiful herb crust on the top, like so. And then finish our sauce, this is sauce grand veneur, as we've said, red currant jelly, a bit of chocolate, a touch of cream. So a little over that donut, and then just a touch of sauce around. There we go. There you go, you've got herb custard venison, braised venison donut, and sauté radicchio. Our last main course um, is vegetarian, uh, so we've got this pressing of root vegetables and potato. Uh, so we've got celeriac, uh, carrot, sweet, potato going through there, uh, a little clarified butter and thyme. That's going to go in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes. When you serve it, make sure you remove a little film layer from around the outside, really important. So that's going in the oven for 15 to 20 minutes. And then the little choux farci, so this is a cabbage leaf stuffed with um, sauteed cabbage in the centre. That's going to take about 8 minutes in a pan of uh, boiling water. So drop it in, in the clean film, and then when this comes out, be really, really careful, obviously it's gonna be uh, lots of steam inside. And then we're serving a cauliflower puree with that, which is just gonna get warmed up on the stove. And also some crispy cavolo nero. Uh, so like the little deep fried seaweed uh, from the Chinese. Uh, lovely little flavor uh, on there, so it's just go on top of the pressing. That's gonna take about three, four minutes in the oven just to re-crisp up. And then we've got carrot dressing, carrot parsley dressing to serve with. Uh, so once that's been in, uh, about 10, 12 minutes, we'll get our little uh, cabbage ball in and then we'll be ready to plate up. So my cabbage uh, has been about eight minutes now. Let's grab it out carefully, turn that heat off, and then a pair of scissors, and then just cut the clean film off, like so, and then pull the clean film just from around the sides, and then just turn it over, there we go. A little bit of mold and salt, just on the top, a tiny bit. Then let's grab our puree. Ready to go. Cornflower puree there. Then there is our root vegetable pressing. And of course our uh, crispy cabinet. So let's start off by placing this up. So I'm going to give the puree a good stir. Then take a nice Nice spoonful there. And next, your pressing. So I suggest lift it out on the paper first of all, just onto your board. And then, just before it goes on the plate, a little re-season. Drain it off well. And let's place that on the side. And then remove a little film there, around the outside. Reason for leaving that on until then is it keeps it perfect sort of shape just until you plate it. 
Then we'll go back and plate our cabbage. Again, give that a good drain off because you'll get a little bit of moisture come out of that. Like so. And of course we're going to take some of our crispy cavalier Nero. And just build up a little bit of that just on the corner of your pressing. There we go. And then lastly, give your, stir, give your dressing a good stir. So this is carrot juice and uh, a touch of parsley oil. And then a little bit over the top of the pressing. And just a touch around, it's just designed to cut through the richness of the puree. There we go. There we go, last main course, a few pressing of root vegetables, shufar seed, cauliflower puree, and a carrot parsley dressing. First dessert here for you um, is a coconut rice pudding. Uh, so we're just serving that loose, uh, just on the strands of the plate. Um, what you want to do is put your rice pudding into the pan and then add uh, your little uh, cooking liquor. So that's a little sweetened coconut milk just going in there. And that wants to go onto the heat. And then give that stir occasionally. And that wants to cook for about two minutes on there. Um, next, uh, we've got a little uh, rum caramel sauce here. So that's got some uh, gold raisins in there. Uh, and then lovely little pineapple juice, uh, orange juice, and of course some spice rum. So that's going on the heat. And then what we've done for you here is this capaccio of pineapple. Um, so we braise the pineapples, uh, again just in rum, uh, muscovado, sugar, cool them down and slice them really, really thinly. So you've got this lovely translucent um, poached pineapple slices. And then we've got some crispy coconut. Uh, so I'm just going to carry on giving that stir for a couple of minutes just to bring that back uh, to the heat and cook the rice through. Uh, and then we'll be all ready to plate up. So it is my rice now. Just been cooking that for final two minutes. Then using the spatula, scrape that out onto your plate. And then just tamp it down a touch, like so. Then what we're gonna do, gotta work quickly now so the rice still is nice and hot when you serve it. Let's just take our pineapple slices. I'm just gonna add those on top. And the warmth from the uh, rice is of course going to heat those up. And then next we're going to get our little rum, spice rum sauce and those raisins. And just add the raisins all on top and again finish with a touch of sauce around the outside, just like so. And there we go. And then lastly, just some of your little coconut slices which we've just uh, baked in the oven. Just gonna add a few of those on the top. All the flavors going really nicely together. Pineapple, rum, coconut. There we go. It's a little slightly different take on rice pudding. Rice pudding, baked with coconut, spice rum, caramel sauce. Halloween weekend, uh, so it can only be one thing uh, for dessert, and that's toffee apples. So this is our take on a toffee apple here. In the centre, of course, you've got some really liquid toffee. Uh, then you've got a little uh, granny slip apple parfait around the outside, and then we've dipped it in white chocolate for you as well. Make sure you take it out of the freezer about 10 to 15 minutes before you want to eat it, because then it's really, parfait's lovely and soft. So, uh, to start off with, what you want to do, get your little vanilla biscuit, um, and you can put shards on the plate, or you can put the piece straight down, up to you. So I'm just going to put a piece down on there. Then I'm going to very, very carefully get my brownies with parfait. I'm just going to sit that on top. I've got a lovely few little shards to go on the top. Then I've sent, uh, sent you with some compressed apple. So that's just in this little backpack bag. Take that out. Just separate those pieces just before you plate them. And then take a little bit of your grains with apple puree. And again, this is nice and tart because the of course the parfait's uh, sweet, so you want a little puree just to counter that. So I'm going to put a little bit of puree down first of all, like so. Then I'm going to take some of my baby apples. I'm just going to put a few of those dotted about. There we go. And then we'll come with a little bit of our compressed apple slices and just feed those just 
rounds are all standing up. There we go. That's enough of those ones. Now I'm going to get a little bit of my biscuit just to finish off. You can just break pieces of that just to go round. There we go. So a little take on top of the apple uh, for Halloween. Hope you enjoy it. Last but no means least is a cheese course. Uh, so this week we've got you chef tasting the cheese course. Uh, remember it comes with this piece of paper which details the order to put it in and also you can, if you want, you can rehearse all of uh, the tasting notes on your cheeses and then surprise your guests with your knowledge on them before it goes. So really important, take your cheese, make sure it comes out of the fridge 15 to 20 minutes ideally or even more uh, before you want to serve it. Cut it open and then very carefully lift that out. It's got a little bit of wax paper just on the top, so we'll just remove that. And then you'll see that we've put these in, in the order that you're going to plate them with. So let's start off, we've got our doorstone goat's cheese just on there. Um, then we've got cheese called Catherine, which is just going on next. Um, and then after that, a little um, Applebee's Lancashire uh, just on there. So Kirk, Kirkham's Lancashire, sorry, on there. And then on the roll right, this one is quite a soft cheese. so. Just get your little spatula and go under there and lift that one off. New palette knife so we don't mix the flavours. Next, we've got Beauvau, which we're just going to put on. And then finally, we've got a piece of Roquefort, so a lovely salty Roquefort just going on there. And then what we've sent you with is a little bit of chutney. So this is a little bit of spice pear chutney on there. So I'm just going to take a nice little spoonful of that just add that on there we go and then we've sent you with this just some uh, little malted cracker so i'm just gonna snap those and just put some nice pieces just along remember you can serve you can buy the ubi chef tasting cheese boards as well if you want to plate up on them so lovely little tasting of cheeses for you uh, with a pear chutney and malted cracker hope you enjoy it